Welcome back to the show. Today, it's going to be fun and it's going to be a little bit spicy because we are talking about a delicious consumption opportunity. One of the more crazy ones. With Season 10 of Overwatch 2, Blizzard are giving everybody the ability to earn mythic skins from past battle passes. That is a step forward. However, the monkey's paw must always curl because they're also allowing players to spend $80 to buy those skins in their complete form. So yes, that is one step forward and firmly two steps back because once again, a new season of Overwatch has launched and we need to talk about how Overwatch's need to alter systems in the middle of their live game to try to meet player expectations while also satisfying line go up is just leading to more and more problems. My main personal takeaway is, man, I kind of feel bad for the Overwatch 2 core development team because it does seem that no matter what they do, some bean counter will force in some really stupid looking self defeating system. Right, let's get cracking. So all heroes are free, all of them, including Venture, which is the new hero that they've put in for season 10. And most people have been enjoying that character. They've got like movement tech that is pretty fresh and fun. So that's really good. But there's a problem. There's no hero to draw people to buy the battle pass immediately. And that means we've got to rework that battle pass because if the battle pass wasn't uh, something that people were heavily incentivized to buy, then uh, we would have a problem. Now, do remember, Blizzard's Overwatch developers, they did not get any profit sharing in March. And uh, to, to clue you in and why, it's because there was no profit to share. And that is even after the team was cut to ribbons as part of the Xbox layoffs. I, I mean, it would be pretty grim if they didn't get their bonus because the severance pay to those devs came out of their profits. Maybe that's the case. If so, that would be grim. But the core point is Overwatch 2 is not making money hand over fist, or at the very least, they are burning a lot more than they're earning. Now, to try to make that line go up, we've got mythic skins as an even more important fixture of this game's monetization, they very much are the big cosmetic draw. And they've introduced a new shop system for mythic skins. And that means you can now try them out before you buy them, which you know what? That's quite nice. You can bring a mythic skin to the practice range and you can check out all of the different effects so you know what you're buying. What a lovely pro-consumer move and a pro-consumer move that you really should savor because uh, that's kind of it for pro-consumer moves uh, in today's video. Now that you've enjoyed that, let's dive into hell together. I mean, hey, at least we got to have some uh, some fun. It's hell, it's spicy. All right, here's how it works. Overall, you can still get a mythic skin for $10. That is $10 plus all of the effort of you progressing through an entire battle pass. And that's thanks to another brand new currency that's been added. So from tier eight onwards, every 10 tiers gets you 10 mythic prisms. Yes, a mythic prism. And that means that by tier 48, you will have earned the 50 prisms needed to unlock the season's base mythic skin, right? Now here's how they describe it. Your base skin will include one set of customizations along with other cool features such as voice effects, voice interactions, animations, or unique VFX that make you stand out in the battlefield. And I mean, hey, fair enough. I think we all do like a high effort skin. Now, by the time you hit tier 78, you will have earned the remaining 30 prisms that you need to complete all of your customizations. So effectively, what this does is it gives you a trackable resource to basically mark the system that previously existed, right? So while the battle passes have fluctuated a bit in comparison, this broadly does map on to where the acquisition model for Mythic Skins was, just that instead of being through the Battle Pass, it is now in a store with the equivalent amount of currency being uh, just earned in the pass. And it does mean that if you want to buy the skin through tier skips with Overwatch coins, you can do that. But that many coins would cost you 120 or so dollars. That's to buy the premium pass with skips and enough bundles. So that's not a feasible solution, but I have good news for you. They have an even higher value way for you to access these mythic prisms. I don't know about you, but like, I don't have any mythic prisms right now. This seems very exciting. So for the Overwatch fans who complete their pass every season, there is actually very little difference going forward, right? If you're the sort of person who just wants to collect everything available. Indeed, you do actually get a nice benefit. If you don't like the mythic skin of the current season, that's okay. You can just 
earn the prisms from the pass, and then you can spend them in the shop. So that is a nice baseline upgrade to all the people who buy that pass. And to pull off the story, they've also had to codify the process of upgrading your skin, right? And that means that the player will clearly know like all the different cosmetic configurations, the colors, the weapon styles. So if you don't want to upgrade to level four because actually you like the purple mercy rather than the blue one, well, you can just buy a more basic version. If you only really like the base tracer quest watch, Good news, you don't have to spend prisms in the other ones, and that does mean you can use those prisms elsewhere. That is pretty good. And to go along with that, the team have confirmed in their FAQ that uh, provided the base level of 50 prisms, that that is unlocked for a given season, that you will be able to upgrade that skin at any point because it is in your library. And you might be thinking that doesn't make any sense. Well, <laughs> that's because there is, uh, there is a little bit of the old FOMO in this, but okay. I think it's time we talk about the wider design of this shop and then dive into the messy stuff. If you do not unlock a base mythic skin in its launch season, then it will rotate out of the shop for the next two seasons, which is 18 weeks. So as an example, right now it's season 10, and that means you can get the mythic skins from season one through seven. In season 11, they will add the Grand Beast Orisa skin from season eight, but you won't be able to get that Mercy skin from uh, this season un until season 13. And this is obviously just complete standard FOMO design, right? It makes sense from a business perspective. It ensures that people are attaching more value to the current skin than anything in the backlog. Uh, but it, it is still FOMO that will draw drive players to feel like they need to catch up to make sure they at least earn the base skin. And I think that's the, I mean, I say smart. It's smart because it's good at extracting money from people, but it's smart that you set that like initial goal that people will feel like they really have to get to. I don't know. I, I feel like that will just increase your baseline level of interaction with this system. And then as we get into the design of the store, uh, the, the upside for Blizzard will become more clear. Now, this will probably drive, yes, uh, player retention, boost up the battle pass, uh, completion levels a little bit. So you could say from a design perspective, that's smart. But then we hit the real problem. What about the progression outside the battle pass? I want you to drop a comment. If you know what price anchoring is, uh, say you know what price anchoring is in the comments. Have that in mind because uh, we're going to be spotting it. Okay. There's an intended path which this model kind of pushes people towards, right? And that is that you purchase the premium pass for 10 bucks, and that gives you enough prisms to fully buy one skin. If you don't play the character for this season or you just don't like the mythic, that's okay. You can basically bank up those prisms and spend them in other things. So this is the ideal version of the system in the minds of the lovely humans who designed it. Players literally have more control. They have the freedom to choose what they want. This is all very positive and it means for blizzard that yeah no battle pass is really a dud because you can always go and get another mythic all very positive in spite of everything else that is being done because my god the other option is 80 bucks it's 80 bucks 80 80 bucks one skin you could buy two hell divers for that you could buy like two or three copies of Overwatch 1 for that. You get the point. You can buy quite a lot for 80 bucks. So here's how it works with our mythic prisms, right? 10 prisms costs 9.99. 50 prisms costs 39.99. I think you can see how much better value that is. And 100 prisms costs you 79.99. I mean, you're literally getting $100 of prisms for only $80. I mean, th that is player forward, empathetic design. They just want you to know that you're getting a good deal when you spend with them, you know, to buy these skins that can cost $80. Now, in the best case scenario, this is supposed to be a catch up mechanic. And that is why the base bundle is $10, right? Because $10 is enough for one upgrade slot, right? 10 prisms. But you know, what about all of the other mythics that exist in the game? What about players having a faster way to unlock this season's mythic? Because regardless of how many times Blizzard say the premium battle pass is the best way, it is literally not the fastest. $10 plus a significant amount of playtime versus a single $80 purchase to get the most efficient prism acquisition method. And uh, then anything that you do earn in that pass can just go to the older skins. And the thing is, you know, they, they add one mythic skin a season, and each battle pass adds one mythic skin worth of prisms. So that does mean that if you want to, you know, get the current one, but also maybe get a prior one, you gotta cough up. Well, 
you could continually just unlock the base uh, mythic skins uh, and then get 30 more prisms by completing your pass and uh, i suppose you could then slowly but surely over years of your overwatch 2 career uh, pick up more of those mythic skins uh, of course though if you do spend 80 bucks well that will be enough for two base skins uh, of course to max out one you do need 80 prisms and uh, it is impossible to purchase 80 prisms of course you will either be buying 50 or a hundred. Now, you might be looking at this and thinking, Michael, you're absolutely mad. I mean, who is actually going to spend that amount of money? Well, there's two angles there. Angle number one is maybe a lot of people will not spend $80 on 100 prisms. But what it does do, right, is it anchors people's perception of value. The idea is that, uh, you know, at $9.99 for 10 prisms, the 80 prisms contained in a battle pass, that that essentially, you know, that's like $80 worth of value on the battle pass. That's only 10. So by anchoring at a super goofy, stupidly high price, it kind of makes the battle pass look like a better deal in comparison. And then, of course, there is the straight fact that the Battle Pass is literally more player-friendly this time around. Uh, the player-friendliness bit, I'm for that. The uh, stupid pricing, I'm not for. But there is another thing, and that is expectations or understandings, perceptions on value, right? So this is a completely goofy amount of money to, uh, like, you know, to, to me, to most people, okay? Um, but if you're on some, let's just say, America software engineer... $110,000 a year, maybe. 80 bucks ain't that much, especially when that individual thinks about how much or, you know, how, how many dollars one hour of their time is worth. I mean, whenever I was in LA for BlizzCon, I was like, even just looking at a Starbucks and a normal ass cappuccino could be, you know, once you add a few things, if you want to add, say, another shot, you're going at nearly $10 and it's absolutely mad. Now, over in somewhere like CA, obviously, they're dealing with a really, really high cost of living, right? So in a world where all of the prices are super goofy and inflated and complete insanity, something like this won't seem as crazy to them. And then you think about who are the people who are designing these systems? Literally, what is the world they live in? They live in a world where, I don't know, you go to, I think, is it sweet green and you get a salad that somehow costs 25 bucks? because money's fake. I don't know. You see what I mean, right? So it does work as price anchoring, but there are people who, you know, in many cases would be called whales to whom $80 is is not much. I mean, tomorrow we'll be clowning in Mike Ybarra for his, um, you know, his musing on the idea of uh, tipping AAA games. You know, imagine you, you finish a game and uh, the credits roll and it just says press X to tip the deaths. It just shows perspectives on what money is that are wildly different. Uh, again, you look at, say, median salaries in the USA, you compare those to the UK or to Northern Ireland, and it's just evidently clear that that's crazy loony town compared to where most of us uh, actually are, right? And what we're used to. Now, this is all really from the perspective of an existing player. But of course, if you didn't have the opportunity to get the Mythic skins previously, this, uh, this is going to be a, a strange situation. In the past, you obviously had no way of getting them, and this presented a problem for Blizzard. They would put all this work into these mythic skins to only then throw them in the bin because they were done. The battle pass was finished, right? Uh, so now you could say this is an amazing way to actually give players a big goal to achieve within Overwatch 2. But you can't have the old and the new. There are only two ways to get the prisms. You either pay, which, you know, you can get unlimited uh, prisms and it's very expensive, or you can play, which only gets you 80 a season. Once you've spent the prisms you've earned, you cannot uh, go back and get anything from, like, another season because you just don't earn enough prisms, so you'll have to pay for them. And you can basically see that this is a design that is intended to go straight to your wallet super quick. Because at the end of the day, Overwatch 2 is not really about Overwatch 2. I mean, it is to, uh, to, to me as somebody who actually enjoys the game. I'm sure it is to many of you who maybe just want a fun hero shooter. I'm sure it is to the developers, but to the corporate entity, to Blizzard, to Microsoft it is a way to sell skins. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, what gets measured gets managed. It's the idea that the things that you measure, that is naturally what your focus is going to be on. And while I'm sure the game developers are looking at telemetry and win rates and all of those things from their matches and doing their best work, or at least trying hard, the thing that actually gets these people maybe 
a profit share, maybe a bonus, it is these skins. And for my final comment, it's kind of hilarious that people used to see a mythic skin as being $10, right? Um, or at the very least, you know, you spend $10 and then you can guarantee you get the mythic skin, assuming nothing happens that torpedoes your life and means you can't play Overwatch 2. So in your head, it is uh, $10 plus effort. Now they're, they're $10 currently, but as soon as they go into the vault, right? And go into that store, now they're $80. I mean, just think about the amount of premium value of potential spend that they will be accruing for every single goddamn player. And remember, this is a world where they they could not make enough money by making three missions and selling them to you for $15 slash a $40 uh, big bundle thing. It wasn't profitable enough. That ultimately is the situation. This is a game that, from our current understanding, is not in profit, which is kind of shocking, given how massive of a franchise it is. They could broadly go in two ways. They could make more people spend a little bit more money, or they could target the whales. And a game that has literally a monthly battle pass thing, it's bloody Helldivers too, right? But the thing with Helldivers is, as you play it, you earn the equivalent of your Overwatch coins or your Mythic Prisms, right? By virtue of that game being generous, it increases the average amount of participation in the economic system I mean, God, I almost sound like, a, I don't know, Bernie talking about small donors or something, but it's far more that model than this, which feels like whaling. So that ultimately is it for this video. Look, this is not some crazy story that will redefine the industry or some breaking report of horrible work conditions. It is just us clowning at monetization design because ultimately it's fun for me. I just want to kind of bring up this issue of... You got the core devs trying their best, trying to make good shit. How does it feel when they then see that this is the kind of thing that is going on? And I mean, I'm talking about this from a UK and Ireland perspective. Obviously, there are so many other places in the world where this, you know, currency exchange rates, etc., is even more ludicrously expensive. I, thanks, I hate it. And with that said, thanks to you for watching. We will be back for some good fun tomorrow. So I'll see you then.